So are we seeing the beginning stages of the end time famines? Jimmy Evans joins the table to reveal what we are facing and how you should prepare. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. An ancient prophecy unfolding in modern headlines. The world descending into chaos. A great deception masquerading as peace. As a new regime rises, a leader will usher in lawlessness, setting up the final chapter of human history. Welcome to the End Times. Wars, natural disasters, and a growing shortage of food and supplies. Are these events signs of the end times? And how should we be preparing for the days and years ahead? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we'll find out how. But first, joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. Hello. We need to be prepared. We must be prepared. People get ready. <laughs> Jesus is coming <laughs> soon. We'll be going home. <laughs> but it is important. We have to talk about these things. And it's not to create fear. Yeah. It's to prepare people so that we are ready and that we can do the best that we can do to make heaven bigger in the process. Process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anna Kendall, how are you? I'm just great. And you know, we're not to worry about yeah. the end times, but never does it say don't be prepared. Yeah, so right. this is going to help us prepare. Right. But don't be worried. I don't like worry. That. That's right. Rachel Ann Brown, don't be fearful. Oh, all this is very interesting to me. And if we have to go to the grocery store one more time and <laughs> stock up for like a year, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because they've been saying this for a long time, people. Oh, uh -oh. They're like, go to the grocery store, we'll get the toilet paper, it. get the canned goods. Like, is it actually <laughs> happening this time? I Okay. Well, you can ask all these questions. Okay. That's so right. just be ready. Okay. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank okay. you. And I, I think the shows we did on Heaven just kind of put it out there a little more to like, wow, we have something amazing to look forward to. You know, we did some shows on Heaven. If you hadn't seen those, you need to see them because they're so good. I'm ready to go, <laughs> yes. but I'm going to stay here and occupy until he comes. Yes. Well, he is one of your favorite guests, one of my favorite guests as well, a powerful voice on the topic of end times. Please welcome our dear friend, Jimmy Evans. Here he comes with good music, always, <laughs> yes. to make you music. think of end times. Yeah. <laughs> good Hello, music everybody. and good news. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. You heard Rachel. She was saying, well, how many more times are we going to have to go to the grocery store? Well, you know, they keep saying, like, they, they like letting us know that, like, food shortages are coming, especially with the war in Ukraine, because they produce most That's of right. the world's grain. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Russia and the Ukraine, they produce a third, they export a third of the world's grain. And then also I've heard because gas prices are soaring, then that's also affecting farmers' ability to right. run yes. their tractors. Rachel, it's the perfect storm for a coming famine. Oh, and so yeah. the, the Bible, here's the interesting thing about famine, that's what this show's about, is about how to prepare for the coming famines. But famine is a birth pain before the tribulation, and it's one of the major judgments in the tribulation. Wow. And so the birth pain famine that we're about to enter into right now is preparing for even a worse famine during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. So there will be, well, I'll, I'll tell you the number in just a minute of how many people during the tribulation will die by famine. So it's going to be a major problem. And see, famine has always been a judgment from God. Right. When people go into famines, it's yes. never a blessing. It's always right. a judgment. Mm -hmm. So we are now being judged uh, by God uh, in, in, in America, around the world, we see a judgment of the lack. Now, you never thought in the United States of America you'd go in the grocery store and see empty shelves. Oh, wow. Never. And so we're now going, we're, we're seeing, we're and seeing. we've seen that. We have seen that. Yeah. It's, I know it. Uh, you, like recently. But yes. you never thought you would. No. See, when I, when I was growing up, they, they showed the communist countries and they mm -hmm. had empty shelves. Mm -hmm. Right. And we had all the full shelves now in America. A lot of it's because of COVID, but it's, it's more than just COVID. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, the war in Russia has uh, made a big difference in the world food supply. But see, China is one of the most austere governments related to COVID. And right now in Shanghai, there are 26 million people, residents in Shanghai, locked down. Mm -hmm. well, because those, of COVID? Because of COVID. Okay. And they have a zero tolerance for COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, those are workers in plants that make wow. things that yes. come to America. Well, yes. It just shows, I think, too, what Rachel's talking about, our grocery stores and the lack of things, is we as a country have totally depended on other countries yeah. way mm -hmm. too oh much. My gosh. Yeah, yeah, way too much. And that was one of the things that our past uh, administration was trying to free us right. Right. From, from being so dependent yes. on some of these other countries. They make all of our antibiotics, uh, mm -hmm. if you can imagine. And so if we went to war with China, 
Think about the think about the consequences of the things we immediately wouldn't have. Yeah. Now China is very dependent on us, also. That's the good news about it. But it's a it's a big problem. Though Jesus, let me read this first scripture and kind of get into. Well, this. let me just ask you this before you start. So, okay. is the famine going to happen right before the tribulation and during the tribulation, yes. or the so rapture may not better. take place? And we can still experience famine. Oh, before the we rapture? We are going to experience we famine going before, to. The, now, before, before the rapture. Before the rapture, yeah. And the, Jesus, this is Matthew 24. And Jesus is now responding to a question from his disciples of when the end's going to come and what the signs are. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Mm. And so you, you ladies know birth pains start mild and end up very severe. Yes. And they get closer together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we've been seeing, you know, for the last really 50 years, 70 years since Israel became a nation. You know, 70 years ago, you saw just every now and then a little bit of thing here, end time stuff. Those are called Braxton Hicks, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> barely, barely starting. You know. yes. Right, Rachel? Yes. We're seeing severe birth pains mm. yeah. happening in the world right now. Severe. Every, every day. Wow. You're seeing the severe. Well, that, that means something's about to be birthed. Mm. And we know what's about to be birthed is two things, the rapture and the tribulation. Okay. Those are something very good and something very bad. But Jesus said that famines, uh, pestilences, were coming out of a two-year pandemic, mm -hmm. and earthquakes. There's earthquakes and, and volcanic activity increasing all over the world. Wars and rumors of wars. Everything that Jesus said here is taking place right now, mm -hmm. and it's increasing. And so uh, right now what we're seeing is the beginning of a famine that will actually get worse in the tribulation. We're going to see some of it. I don't believe that there's necessarily going to be people widespread dying in America of starvation. Mm -hmm. We're going to see dramatically higher prices, and we're going to see dramatically uh, reduced supplies. Mm -hmm. and, but it has to, and we'll, we'll get into that more. Let me, let me read this is from Revelation 6. Now, Revelation 6 is the beginning of the tribulation. It's the seal judgments come first. Okay. Revelation 6, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come and see, Another horse fiery red went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that should, people should kill one another and was, there was given to him a great sword. So now the, the first seal is the Antichrist, the rider on the white horse. The second seal is right on red horse and peace is taken from the earth and people kill each other. When you think people are killing each other right now, exactly. nothing compared to that. Then it says, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come. Come and see, and I looked to behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures say, A quarter of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name who sat on it was Death and Hades, followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death and by the beast of the earth. Well, the first thing you notice here is war comes, this rider on the red horse comes, takes peace from the earth. The next thing that happens is famine. So in Russia, we're seeing war right now between Russia and the Ukraine, and the result is famine. Now, the Israelis just buried uh, 300,000 uh, tons, I'm sorry, 30,000 tons of produce because they can't sell it to Russia. Russia was their market. Wow. And now because of the sanctions on Russia, they can't export it. Oh. They're having to bury it in the ground. And so this is uh, the wow. uh, uh, Palestinians, oh. the uh, Syrians, many people, Lebanese in, in the Middle East, buy their grain from the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So now they're rationing grain and, and goods in a lot of the Middle East there. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is having a ripple wow. effect. But as the Ukraine and Russia export a third of the world's grain. So Russia's under sanctions. The Ukraine, obviously, can't, they can't plant. They're at war, or very few of them can plant. And so th this begins now, but it's going to have a ripple effect. Now, the third thing here, it says the seal number three is the rider on the black horse. It's going to take a day's wage to buy enough food for one day. So this is an average worker. However much an average worker makes in a day, let's just say it's $100. And so it's going to take a tremendous amount of money to feed yourself mm -hmm and your family. And then seal number four is mass starvation. So it says that there, there was a, a fourth of mankind died, but hunger was one of the ways they died. Now, a fourth of mankind, there are eight billion people in the world right now. If you took a billion out because of the rapture, and that's probably reasonable, 
you end up with 7 billion. And so a fourth of mankind is 1.7 billion. So let's just say that all four of the reasons, there are four reasons listed of why people are going to die. Hunger was one of them. If hunger kills uh, a fourth of the fourth, that's 421 million people who will die of hunger in the first half of the tribulation. Wow. That's in addition to the wars and all the other judgments that are going to happen. So this is what you call a massive famine that is going to be killing people. Well, it's starting now, and it's going to, it's going to continue. So let me talk about, I'm going to talk about seven contributing factors to the coming famine. Let me begin by some that aren't on here. Let me begin with avian flu. 37 million chickens and turkeys have been destroyed mm. in 29 states in the United States in the last six months or so because of a bird flu. Right. It's going, this being passed between chickens and turkeys. Now it's continuing. They're continuing to kill more animals. Egg prices have gone up. Meat yeah. prices have gone up. Yes. This is one of the contributing factors to that. Another thing is baby formula. Now Abbott Laboratories recalls Similac uh, baby formula, and that's what really began this problem. And they're trying to open the plant back up. It has some bacteria in it, something like that. And now you see this lack of baby formula. This shows you how, how fragile mm -hmm. the supply chain is related to food. There's one other thing here, and we were talking about this on the program with uh, Michelle Bachman. The World Health Organization, uh, the Biden administration, is ceding national sovereignty of America over the World Health Organization for them to make decisions on our behalf. Regarding, in other words, they can shut us down. Yes. Like you saw in California, like you saw in New York. They can willy-nilly, they can shut us down. They're, they're being given tremendous power. If this passes, uh, they're going to be given tremendous power. Well, they're controlled by the Chinese. The World Health Organization is controlled by the Chinese. And the Chinese are two things. They're the most severe related to COVID. Uh, 26 million people in Shanghai have been uh, locked down. Because of that, they have a zero tolerance policy on COVID. Number two, they're our worst enemy. Yes. If China could harm us, they would harm us. Yeah. And so China controls the World Health Organization if they want to now, because of the control that they exercise over world control health, they can us. shut us down, lock down our schools, lock the, the lockdown restaurants, wow. willy-nilly make the laws that we saw. We saw it during COVID yes. in, in some of the, the liberal states of just, you can't go to church, you can't go to yeah. school, you can't eat at a restaurant, things. all that kind of so, this is, this is a bad deal. And so we, we see there's, the things I'm going to talk about are just some of the things. But I want to go into seven things that, that uh, I believe are leading up to this world famine. First is historically bad crops in China. Now, China just had their worst winter wheat crop ever. And this is bad because China lies. They never tell the truth. They all, everything's always great. Great crops, great economy. Yeah. They're coming out publicly and saying two things. One is we just had our worst crop ever. They're the number one consumer in the world of wheat. Wow. And so that we've had our worst crop ever. Number two, after two good years, we have a shortage of supply. And so in the midst of everything that's going on, the number one consumer in the world has a shortage of supply. Number two, 71% of the United States winter wheat crop was affected by drought this year. Mm -hmm. So America, obviously, I think we're third in the world in, in uh, grain uh, supply. China had their worst crop. Now we've had most of our winter wheat crop affected by drought. Number three is skyrocketing fuel and fertilizer prices. Now this is an a article here from the New York Post. It says looming, looming food shortages is the next slow-moving disaster to hit the world. And what it's talking about here, let me read just a little bit. It says food prices are already skyrocketing, some a lot. This comes from inflation caused by runaway government spending over the past two years. Some is from supply chain issues, but a new problem is rearing its head and government officials seem as likely to make it worse as better. And it's talking here about the, the fertilizer index, the green markets, North American fertilizer index. Uh, and by the way, Russia is the number one exporter of fertilizer in the world for crops. Mm -hmm. It jumped 16% last Friday. Uh, urea went up 22%. Uh, potash, this is where Russia's the top producer, increased 34%. And so now you have uh, farmers that cannot plant. Now, in the United States, we would lose 40% of our crops if we couldn't fertilize. So fertilizer is a huge issue in boosting production. And so fuel and fertilizer. So look, when you go to the gas pump right now, and you put gas in your cars, whatever, diesel is up tremendously. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so now what you're looking at, the average farmer is saying, can I make any money? Mm -mm, right. there, this is a, it's a for-profit business. Okay. So can I make any money? I'm going to have to pay extra for fuel. I'm going to have to pay extra for fertilizer. And transportation costs are up 400%. Mm -hmm. 
So if I do produce it, I've got to get it to market and my transportation cost is up. So that what happens is a lot of farmers are choosing not to plant. Mm -hmm. It's more profitable if I don't plant because I'm not going to lose any money. Yeah. But if I plant, I'm going to lose money. So now in addition to all the other exacerbating factors, you have farmers that are just looking and saying, I'm not going to make any money. Why, why should I plant my crops? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, war in Ukraine. They're the breadbasket of Europe. Uh, they in Russia, a third of the world's wheat and barley. Number five uh, factor in the coming famines is the sanction on Russia. Uh, Russia, of course, we're at war with them, so they can't export many things, and they can't import many things. Mm -hmm. And so and we're, we're very dependent so on Russia. We're very dependent on the rest of the world in, in ways that we wouldn't want to admit. Number six is uh, supply chain problems and skyrocketing transportation costs, as I said before, up 400 Percent, And so this is growing worse and worse around the world. And again, China being locked down, they're producing many of the goods that we get. And we're not getting many goods right now, or we're getting them very late. You remember the, the scenes that you saw on the news of the ships sitting off the coast yes. of the United yes. States? Yeah. Right. And we didn't have enough trucks. Yes. We didn't have right. enough workers to get those off the ships. Yeah. And then we didn't have to have trucks to get those mm -hmm. to, to marketplace. Yeah. This is getting worse and worse. And so number seven is mysterious fires at 25 food processing plants oh, no. across the United and States. And this is like crazy. I've been yeah. reading about this. Yeah. It's Absolutely wicked. nuts. Uh, let me just read a few of these to you. Uh, this, is, this article was May 2nd. It says, Saturday evening a fire broke out at Purdue Farms facility in South Norfolk area of Chesapeake, North Carolina. Ten days ago, a small crane crashed within a mile of the runway of the Covington, Georgia Municipal Airport hitting a General Mills food facility. Mm. On Sunday, it was being reported that nearly a dozen wildfires had roared through key agricultural areas of Nebraska. In the middle of the night on March 23rd, a fire broke out on the roof of the General Mills food processing plant in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Mm. On March 28th, Maricopa Food Pantry, a local food bank in Arizona, lost 50,000 pounds worth of food in a fire that occurred just 15 minutes after their food bank closed, and on and on and on. Yeah. 25 different examples Word. of food processing plants. Well, it's either a judgment of God, mm -hmm. or it's terrorism, yeah. or it's both. Both, right. But, but we're seeing, it's just like the perfect storm of all these things coming, coming together, coming together yeah. at the same time. And so, and, but, but here's the thing, birth pains get worse. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus, this is Jesus in Luke 21. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. That's all happened. Mm -hmm. The stress of nations with perplexity. What this means is people are having, the world is having problems mm -hmm. and there's no solution. This is mm -hmm. where we are right now. That's true. The sea and the waves roaring. And the sea and the waves roaring can mean two things. Climate, it also means people. The seas in the Bible means peoples. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That's talking about demonic powers. Mm -hmm in the heavens will be shaken. So what we see right now is ev everything is being upset. Everything is being shaken that can be shaken. And so if I didn't know Jesus, I'd be depressed. Oh my goodness, right. yes. you know, Imagine that yes. this world were your home, you didn't have any eternal concept of anything, and you look around the world and you see famine, pandemic, war, mm -hmm. rumors of war, Russia threatening nuclear war right now. And, and they might do it. Yeah. You know, Finland and, and some of these Scandinavian countries join NATO. They're threatening them that they're going to nuke them if they do. And I don't know that they would, but the threat of that is there. And so we see wars and rumors of wars and all those things like that. So I want to take the rest of this message to calm people down. because Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Because it's, ups it's yeah. upsetting. It but, but to say it has to happen. Yeah. Is, is prophetic before mm. the tribulation, is prophetic in the tribulation. And again, I believe that the scarcity of food, that you're going to end up paying a day's wage for a, a quarter of wheat, I believe this is the beginning of that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We're in the end times. We're seeing a progression of events on every stage. Yes. But now food is becoming scarce, even in America, even in the, the, the richest places that there are. So let me, there are three things that I would encourage people to do to prepare for what's coming, and that is to know Jesus is number one. Yes. Absolutely. If a person, if, if you're upset, if you're fearful, the answer is Jesus. Not yes. Also, the answer is understanding Bible prophecy. Yes. Now, Jesus, the, the second, the number one is know Jesus. Number two is stay calm and don't fear. This is Matthew 24, and this is extremely comforting. Jesus said, of that day and hour, no one knows. That's the return of Christ. Not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. For as the days of Noah were, 
so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, before the flood, mm -hmm. they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. This is the rapture. One will be taken, the other left. Two, two women will be grinding at the mill, one taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. And so the, how bad is this going to get? It, not, not much worse than this right here. Mm. This is worse than any, I never thought I would live to see the world like this today. Wow. Yeah. Never. I never thought I would. Never. This, this is worse than I but ever But I literally thought. feel like every time we say it can get worse, I know. somehow it yeah. gets yeah. worse. Because, get because right. the birth pangs get stronger. That's right. The birth pangs are getting stronger. Yes. But it's giving birth. And so the encouragement I have to people is we're not going through the tribulation. 1 Thessalonians 1 says Jesus comes to deliver us from the wrath to come. Yes. 1 Thessalonians 5 says that God has not destined us for wrath. And Revelation 6 calls the tribulation the wrath of, of the, the Lamb. lamb. Yes. So the tribulation is not judgment. Because when judgment comes, you can repent and judgment passes. It is wrath. It, it, God is going to punish the world for seven years wow. with the wrath of Almighty God. And God has not destined us for that. What will we go through? What Noah went through and what Lot went through? An evil, evil world growing worse and worse. And the Bible says, Genesis 6, that during the days of Noah, that the world was corrupt and violent. It means immoral mm -hmm. and violent. And that's what we see right now. This just buffalo like shooter oh that goodness. walked into the grocery store and yes. just started shooting people based on the fact they were black. He was also anti-Semitic. Full of hate. You're going to see mm -hmm. at, during the tribulation, that'll be normal. Oh people goodness. be killing each other like that mm -hmm. every single day all over the place. What about what we're seeing where they go in the stores yeah. and they just Smash steal out. and walk Whatever out and want. nobody stops them? Lawlessness. The, the Bible said, the same Thessalonians 2, Paul calls the Antichrist the lawless one. Mm -hmm. And so law, the Antichrist, will be the epitome of lawlessness. That You see this, um, you know, defund the police kind of stuff. That's yes. satanic. Yes. That is demonic. Anytime you see someone trying to remove authority from society, yes. that is the spirit. But Romans 13 tells us to submit to every governing institution for the Lord's sake. And it says it's the Lord's minister. Mm. It's the Lord's minister. Authority is God's minister. So when you see people that are against authority, you're looking at someone who's operating for Satan. Mm -hmm. And so the, what we're saying, the smash and grab and all that kind of stuff, yeah. it's entitlement, it's, it's rebellion, it's, it's all that kind of stuff. So I believe what we're seeing right now is, is we're seeing uh, the days of Noah and the days of Lot. The, the immorality in our nation right now, and I was telling you guys there's a, there's a divinity school right now that is, that is pronouncing God is queer, that God is trans. What? Uh, there is a church, the United Church of Christ in Naples, Florida, is hosting an event, I believe it's next week, it's an LGBTQ event, uh, and they're teaching young people from, I believe, at least age from 12 to 18 about all, all of the trans and gay oh stuff, goodness. and they're having drag queens to come in and to entertain them in church. Oh my goodness. This is a church. Wow. And I never dreamed that I would see a world this immoral, but also where the church is joining in. There are churches that are pro-abortion pro-trans, yes. pro all those kinds of things like that. And I just think you need to take the church, name church off the side of your building. Man. But that's how far we've fallen. Wow. But So number one is no Jesus. Number two is stay calm. Don't fear because yeah. Jesus is coming for us. Mm -hmm. Number three is be wise and prepare. And I want to talk just practically for just a minute because yeah. I'm not a prepper. Uh, I know some people are preppers, and I want to say, you, if you're if you're preparing for the tribulation, I mean, you, you, I, I don't know what you what you get, you know. <laughs> right. But you need to build an underground <laughs> tunnel and go in there and live. So, <laughs> but so I I think it's wise to have two or three months of food on hand. I think that's just wisdom. You know, there can be pandemics. Yeah. Yes. Well, there uh, could be like just like our electricity shortage that exactly. happened a year ago. That's right. Things like that, just to be prepared in exactly. your home if you have a family. Yes. Well, Karen and I, we, we put a generator in our home uh, a couple of years ago, which came in very handy dur during the, yeah. you know, all that. No, but yeah. exactly what you said, a natural disaster. You know, that's there right. could be tornadoes nice. or hurricanes or something like that. Mm -hmm. But there are these people that make these food in the buckets that last for like 25 mm -hmm. years yeah. that you can survive on. Mm -hmm. It's pretty affordable. And, and, and the other thing too is when you go to the grocery store, just get some extra. Yeah. Yeah. Get an extra can of beans or something sure. like that. Yeah. And this is something that I heard someone say that I thought was really interesting. And that is, because I was saying, don't be a prepper. 
uh, and this one uh, person said to me, I am a prepper, not for myself. I'm going to leave it behind for the people who left Oh, after oh wow. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that yeah. was a really Along with your book. That's, that's We're right. With me. <laughs> right on top of that's right. <laughs> but, but I thought that was really neat. Yes. Because it was so thoughtful. And that is, if, yeah. if you are saving food, great. Mm -hmm. It'll be there for the people. And that's they'll right. eat it. They're going to come yeah, into your house and they're going to yeah. eat it. Yeah. 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 So I think that's very accommodating. Wow. Those are just some, you know, practical things yeah. Yeah. that we can do. Um, and I love the part that you said, don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. Because God has given us everything that we yes. need, yeah. including what the end of the story is. Well, you need to be thankful that we have a Savior who's coming for us. Yes. Yes. And when Jesus said the two men are in the field, one's taken, one's left, the word taken there is the word paralambano in the Greek, and that means to receive to yourself. In John 14, Jesus said, in my Father's house were many mansions, and he's talking about a wedding now. I'm going away to prepare a place for you, which a Jewish bridegroom would do. And I'm going to come back to receive you to myself. Yes. That word receive is paralambano. Mm. And so Jesus promised he was going to prepare a place for us. He was going to come back and receive us. And that's what the rapture is. We're yes. taken. Yeah. He is coming to take us to be with him. And let me just say something else. He's heart sick for that day to come. Yeah. Just like a bridegroom, a natural bridegroom would be to marry his bride that he adores. Yes. Jesus is heart sick. He's hastening for that day to come. But it's not going to come until the Father tells him to come. Yeah. Right. And so I, I believe that we're, we're there. I believe, I don't, I don't set dates, yeah. but I believe that Jesus is coming very, very soon. And God has made provision for us to spend eternity with That's him. Right. Yeah. Why would we not avail ourselves right. mm -hmm. to the gospel, which is the good news that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Could you pray yeah. right before we leave the air today and we'll repeat after you. If you don't know the Lord, now's the time for you to pray this prayer and receive Jesus. Jimmy. Yeah. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. And I invite you to come in. I invite you to come in. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Give me the gift of eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power. Give me the power. To change. To change. And to live for you. And to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. And thank you for praying that prayer. We are out of time. I know today's topic can be concerning, but that's why the Lord tells his people beforehand. So don't give in to fear, just like Jimmy was talking about. Listen to the Lord's direction and lean into his wisdom to help safeguard your family. And remember that the most important thing is that you and your loved ones know Jesus. We can't take any of this with us. We can only take people with us. Yeah. So it's so important to allow the Lord to use you, share his love and gospel with everyone you meet. And I just believe you're just going to get an unction, if you will, from the Holy Spirit. And I'm just, I want to encourage you to listen to that still small voice when you're, a conversation opens up with someone. And I mean, yeah, I don't want you to go, you know, shove it down their throats. But I just say in conversation with people that you know, there's going to be opportunities for you to share the gospel. And I want you to have that boldness and courage to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're watching today and you don't know Jesus, again, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. And we have prayer partners that are standing by ready to pray with you. If you did pray the prayer, uh, be sure and call us. Let us know. We're going to send you a book entitled, Now What? And we have it in Spanish and English. We'd love to send it to you free of charge. Of course, you can go to daystar.com, click on prayer, and send your prayer request in that way if you have a prayer request. But I do want to thank Jimmy for joining us today at the table. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at endtimes.com. Let us know your thoughts about today's program by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited. Those of you that prayed the prayer, welcome to the family of God. We love you. God loves you. And guess what? The best is yet to come. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.